Hi friends, it's Jay Morrell. And as my YouTube channel has been growing a little bit and I'm getting more viewers and more interaction in the comments, I've been receiving a question from moms. Uh, it seems like every video or every couple videos wanting to know what my personal daily habits are to get myself ready for the day and to be able to prayerfully storm into life and storm into mothering every day with my children with a smile on my face and my teeth brushed and my hair curled also. So I thought, you know, us moms, we always wanna know how other moms do it. So I'm gonna share with you my daily habits, um, what I like to put into practice most days, Lord willing, to help myself feel pulled together for the day. Also some things I do throughout the day, you'll see. There is total grace here. So. When I share these things with you, please, no condemnation at all. I have been a mother for 14 years. I have a many, many, I have a lifetime left to go because we're always a mom. Um, but I've had a house full of littles for quite a while. I now also have teenagers. We have systems in place. We are definitely a big family team here. We all have tasks that we do, um, but this is the truth. I will be the mom in my fuzzy pink bathrobe at 2 p.m. and I will have crazy hair easily and I will find my one cup of morning coffee in the microwave and wonder how did that get there uh, if I don't on purpose get my day started and if I don't get my day started before my family gets rolling. So my number one habit that helps me and it is a hard one, but it's definitely been worth it to me in my world that helps me get moving for the day is to get up before my children and to get myself completely ready. That is hair, jewelry, um, big gaudy bracelet, a scarf of some kind. I usually put on some kind of goofy earrings that make me feel like I'm put together. And, um, and I do completely do my hair for what having my hair done is for me. I, how I flip and curl my hair every day is something that I do. I usually do my hair the first day, and then the second day, instead of using the hot iron and curling my hair again, I'll wear my hair back in some configuration, a ponytail, or I might do one of these little numbers where, let's see if I can get it in the video, I do like a little spritty thing on the top. So I do my hair every day and I do my hair number one for myself because it helps me feel like a human being. Um, and then I do my makeup every day. Again, put on my jewelry, get myself dressed. And I know depending on the season of life that you're in, that's not always possible. If you have five children ages five and under, you know, having on a bracelet may not really be a big priority. Or then again, it may be. It just depends on what kind of woman you are and what things you can do for yourself to make you feel like you're put together and, and you're complete for that day. So if I don't get myself totally together pretty much first thing in the morning, then it is a struggle. Then, as I said, I am the mom at 2 p.m. and I wonder, okay, where did this day go? I'm still in my bathrobe because as soon as everybody is charging full steam ahead for the day, you know, it takes me a good 30 minutes to get myself together. And I like to listen to the piano guys or listen to Dave Ramsey or listen to worship music and for it to not be a big pressured event. Um, so depending on if I'm working an early morning schedule or more of a evening later at night schedule. Depends on what time of day that I'm actually getting myself together. And my weird schedule configurations is probably a whole other video. <laughs> so for now, for now we'll just keep it no matter if it's four in the morning or if it's seven at the morning. And I know that that 4 a.m. is scary, can be scary for some, but I get myself together first. If I'm on my early morning schedule where I'm getting up at four, then I have no problem having peace and quiet, getting myself ready. If I'm on a schedule flip where I work for my business more hours in the evening after the kids go to bed, then my goal is to still go to bed by 11 or at the very latest 12 so that I can get up at seven and I know I have to make my coffee and go straight to the bathroom to get ready. Now by seven, my little fellas, Gabriel and Liam, they're four and five, they will be up at seven. And I have them on a little system where when they wake up in the morning, 
whether I get up and I'm working early or whether I've slept till seven and then I have to go get myself ready. When they wake up in the morning, they have their little stack of pants, shirts, underwear, socks on the kitchen table for both of them. Usually there is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for them from the freezer that I just set out the night before. And there's like a sippy cup of water or a water bottle that way, because at seven, when they get up, I am either still doing my morning work for my business on my computer or I just got up and I have to go get ready. So that gets my little guys in a system where they can dress themselves at, at four and then my five-year-old, he's actually, he's, a, he's the next birthday, he's about to be six. So they can get themselves ready, that's excellent life skills, and then I have a little room to either work for another hour until eight or to get myself ready. I hope I didn't lose you guys there mentioned in my schedule, but it's kind of hard to let you know my morning routine without knowing that I have weeks where I'm up early and I'm doing a bulk of my business hours in the morning and then I have weeks based on life demands where I work in the evenings after the little kids go to bed. Any way it goes, my goal in life is to be full on mom all day. And I know I'm dabbling in my working homeschool mom stuff and I do have a book coming out on that subject and you all can just pray for me about that. I'm also speaking on that topic at the Teach Them Diligently convention. So I have a lot to say about balancing children, family, homeschool, and then real business and having a real team who works for you and developing a business and all of that. So hold me back, I will not get into all that now. But back to our seven, habits to help a mama feel sane during the day is praise the Lord. I have to get dressed first thing in the morning or I just will not feel right. I will not feel like I can just fully give myself into my, into the day. I don't know if you're like that or not, but if you find yourself 10, 11 o'clock feeling kind of just grubby and um, like you're not bright and you can't give yourself fully to your family and your children, it may just mean that you need to try a day, you know, try getting up and getting yourself dressed first. Go ahead and curl your hair, put on some lip gloss, make sure your teeth are brushed. And I won't tell anyone, but I know, I'm the chief among sinners. I know that if I don't get myself ready, I will be dragging for the rest of the day and I won't feel right. And really, I'm not feeling right about myself. So if you have any trouble just not feeling quite right, feeling like you're not really in control of your day, I just challenge you, go ahead and try to have a couple days in a row where you make it a point to get up first and get yourself ready first and see how your day is different. The second thing that I do besides getting myself ready in the morning is I then spend my time in the Word. Now, I am a Christian mom. I know that everyone watching this may not be a Christian mom, but largely that is who I'm speaking to. And if you are a Christian mom, I just challenge you, challenge you, challenge you to get yourself ready and spend your time in the Word. Now, for me, I usually make it a, a two-part system. I get ready, I'm praying while I get ready, uh, and then I flip right into my Bible at the kitchen table with my journal and I try to get in whatever I'm able to get in for that morning. I would love to get in 30 minutes and you are not a gold star Christian if you read your Bible for 30 minutes a day. But for me, I have a running calendar, I have a running clock, I have a running a list of hours in my head and that's my goal. Now, children may come into play, it depends on what time of the morning I'm doing that. If I can get in uh, a few chapters, a good 15 minutes and get a few thoughts written in my journal, doing that consistently is amazing. So, number one, get myself ready. That's my personal routine. Number two, I have some time in the Word. Now, that may not be quiet time. If I have gotten up at 7, get myself ready, and then it's about 6.30, 6.40-ish, that means that Gabriel and Liam are in full play mode here in our playroom that I'm currently in right now, and that other children are starting to get up. But you know what? If they see their mom, if part of their childhood memories is seeing their mom at the kitchen table, and part of what I'm saying to them is, hey guys, you can play, but mommy needs 10 or 15 minutes now to be with Jesus. And if I can be with Jesus, then I can be a better mommy throughout the day. And I tell them that. And for the most part, they, they leave me alone. They let me sit there and read my word. We also read the word as a family, and I'll get into that also as a, as a good family habit. But for me, I sit there at the kitchen table and I read the word. Now, if I have gotten up at four, and you know what? 
4.30, 4.40, I don't have any interruptions, and that's fine. Usually I have the baby on me, I'm nursing him, drinking my coffee, reading my Bible, doing my journal, and put that time in then. And it's not a burden, it's a wonderful time. But I know, because again, I have, I have done it all. I can do it wrong, I can do it right, I can tell you how to do it, and I can still do it wrong myself, you know. <laughs> so don't worry, this is real life here, this is real motherhood here. If you are in a season where you have not been reading your Bible, and you have not been having that time with the Lord, it's total grace, it's okay. You can start again tomorrow, you can start again right after you read this, uh, right after you read, yeah, right after you watch this video. Just open your Bible and start. There's a lot to be said for just starting fresh. And it says in the Word that God's mercies are new every morning. So just start again, start again. It's a new morning. Open your Bible. Whenever I have had a season that I have allowed life to be too busy, and I have not gotten my consistent time in reading the Bible in the morning, and I just open it up, and it feels dead, and I'm like, Lord, where do I start? You know, I'm so sorry that I got off of this, but I have to get started again because I know that that's God's best for me. I always start back in the book of John. It's, I mean, the whole word is excellent. You can pick whatever book you want, but my personal habit is I usually start on John 1 and I read through it. And by the time I have read the entire book of John, I just feel that my spirit is more in tune with the word because God is the word and he has so many good promises for us in there. And then I feel ready to dive in deeper. And then I usually add back in the habit of I read uh, one psalm and I read a Proverbs. So then I'm reading a chapter from the New Testament a day, then I'm adding in Psalms and Proverbs, and then I go back to also adding a chapter from the Old Testament. So within about 20 minutes, I can read four chapters and I get a little bit of all the parts and it's refreshing. But I know that whenever I get off because, you know, this world is busy and of course the devil sets us up and I get out of reading the word just as much as the next person. So whenever I have to say, JMRL, straighten up, get back in this habit, do do right, girl, do right, then I start back on first, I start back in John, I add in Psalms and Proverbs as the days go along, and then I start adding in the Old Testament, and then I can get into wonderful habits where I'm reading more and more. But just a quick little reality time for those who are out of that habit, that's how I get back. And God's not mad at me, and God's not mad at you. If you're out of the habit, he, he, it's for your good, and it's for my good that I read the Word. So that's the second habit to help helping a mama feel normal is, again, get yourself ready, and then have your time in the Bible. And for me, because I am a writer at heart, I love to journal, and I will find my, a problem I have is I'll end up journaling through my Bible time. Like, I haven't even read my Bible yet. And that's a gift, and God wants me to use that gift, so I just have to make sure that I get my reading in there also. Uh, another habit that I have that helps me feel normal is having some kind of little hobby for myself. What has become a hobby for me, and I've shared it in another video, is actually doing Trim Healthy Mama. Trim Healthy Mama for me is a hobby, and I really enjoy it, and I'm getting good benefits from it. Um, I'm still on the plan. I will probably be on it for life because I'm enjoying it so much. And believe me, if anything changes, I'll let you know. But having some kind of little hobby that you can weave into your day is helpful if you enjoy knitting. If you can just take a little bit of time to knit, maybe while the kids are doing their school lessons, if you can just sit there, have your knitting or your sewing. I say that because I have friends who are a lot of crafty moms and it's helpful for them to just keep their projects near them. And as time allows during the day, even if it's only 10 minutes that they got to work on a little project, it feeds their soul. Another habit uh, that can be developed and a daily routine for me is to get your water in to really drink your water because as I share I am a mom who enjoys a cup of coffee actually I have two cups of coffee every morning whether I'm pregnant whether I'm breastfeeding whether there's a tornado coming whatever I'm, I'm having my coffee in the morning by the time we have breakfast I need to start working on my water bottle and try to get my water in I do get eight cups of water in a day I would love to be able to get in 16 usually somewhere about 11 or 12 I'm drowning some days I hit 16 some days I don't eight is an excellent goal and if I have had eight cups of water 
I'm not dealing with too much caffeine in my system. I, my body's feeling very balanced. There's another routine that is very helpful for me. I know that I am going to be feeling at my very best is whenever I have a Bible verse that I'm memorizing. Now I've shared on Instagram, sometimes it's to the point where I'll just take a marker. I don't care if there's pretty tattoos out there or if there's other more professional ways <laughs> that or cleaner looking ways that people memorize Bible verses, but I will take a marker, I will take a thin Sharpie and I will write the verse on top of my hand. Because if I'm out with children, if we're grocery shopping, if we're going to the thrift store, you know, looking for seasonal switch out clothes, whatever we're doing, I have written Bible verses on index cards and I keep those in my pocket. But friends, my hand, it's right here. And if I have a Bible verse written on it, it is easy for me to look at that. And you know, Exodus 14, 14, the Lord shall fight for me and I shall hold my peace and remain at rest. I mean, that's an excellent verse for me to be meditating on and saying again and again and again in my mind throughout the day. So having a memory verse that you're working on is one of my tips. And again, I'll write it on my hand. You do not have to write it on your hand. <laughs> you can use an index card. Also different times I've taken, if there's a verse that I really want to get into me and I even want my children to pick up on, I will take that verse, I'll print it out in a Word document, I'll run it through my homeschool mom laminator because got one of those. And I just take that verse and I put it basically in every room. I'll put it by the bathroom sinks, put it in the kitchen, put it uh, by our kitchen table, put it in our mudroom, anywhere where we're gonna be walking around and I know that eyes will go, especially my eyes. You know, I'm, I'm selfish, I'm doing it for me because I know mama needs that verse. But other, other kids will pick up on it too. And it's helpful and it's a way that we can accidentally learn scripture as a family. Depending, depending, real life here, or I'm going to bed later and I'm getting up a little later, I have to go to bed and you have to go to bed too. I cannot sit on the computer and think I'm being productive at one or two in the morning. I know, I've done it. And um, being productive by doing tasks, if I'm already a zombie, I need to go to bed, I need sleep. And I know for me, I've had times where I can push through and I can make it on six hours, but I am not my best me. I need seven to eight hours sleep a night. So. Another habit is to actually go to bed, be it if I'm gonna to try to get in bed by eight, maybe read for a little bit, hopefully be asleep by nine or so, so I can get up at four, or if I'm getting to, if I'm gonna to try to have my work done by 11, so I can have a little bit of chill out time, very little bit of chill out time, and then get to bed so I can get back up at seven, I need to leave enough wiggle room in whatever schedule I am working. <laughs> for that particular week so that I can get a solid seven hours sleep. Um, I may get eight hours sleep and that's an added bonus, but I know I need seven. And you probably know how much sleep you need too. You just need to orchestrate your day in the way to where your best ability you're able to. Now I know that some moms have, you know, we go through seasons where kids are up, or there's a baby not sleeping, there's a baby teething. So let me tell you, total, total grace. This is just me having a conversation with my viewers because I have been asked about my routines. Going through them again, it's getting up, getting myself ready, having my time in the Word, working on a Bible verse to memorize, making sure I'm drinking my water, making sure I'm getting to bed on time. Also, having some kind of little hobby that I'm sneaking into my day. Because my heart, 100%, is to be focused on my family and my children and our whole homeschool life that we're growing here and that we're walking out. You know, that's where I wanna be every day. But having a little hobby worked in is good for me. The last routine that I'll mention for today's video is, is I write out our day on the whiteboard in the morning. Now, I don't wanna be so micromanaged in my home to where we have something for every 15 minute increments. But I write our day down largely like a block scheduling system. I'll write down, you know, eight to 10 and the things I wanna get done in that time and 10 to 12. Some days I do it by the hour, some days I do it in two or three hour blocks. It really depends on what my goals are for that particular day. And even if things change, even if I only follow that whiteboard half or three quarters of the way and I have to adjust and compensate for real life and things, that something solid to start on. It gives me some focus for the day. It lets me know what I need to get accomplished. Another thing I have on the side of our whiteboard 
are some projects that need to get done. Um, whenever I did the video a few weeks ago, whenever I cleaned off the picture shelves, I've had written there for little extra projects for me, picture, selves, picture shelves for about two months. And I finally had a day where there was extra time available and hey, I had a project that needed done and it was a project that I wanted to be a part of so I could go and do that. So because you asked, those are seven of my daily routines that help me feel human every day. And when I miss it, grace abounds, but those are routines that are pretty solid in my life. Um, and I got the idea for this video from the comments with some questions moms were asking me in another video. So I really want this channel, my heart is for this channel, to be an encouragement for moms in their motherhood, in their homeschooling, in their big slash growing family life. And so please tell me in the comments what you would like to see more of. Um, also, there's gonna be a link, as I mentioned, to an article that's gonna have some more helpful mom habit resources for you. And share, please share in the comments what your daily habits are, because none of this channel is about, hey, Jim has got it all together and she's gonna show us how it's done. I'm just sharing parts of my journey. So share with us what are some good habits that work in your world. And you can even share with us some habits that don't work well in your world. I know in my world, especially because I run a business, you know, my business online activities are a good 60 to 80 hours a week and I do not do all those hours. I have a team of about five to six other people who work for me who have their specific task that help make it all possible. And I know for me, I can't work in time chunks throughout the day. I've had seasons where I've had to do that, but mostly I know that, that that's not a routine that works well for me. Lots of reasons why, and I will get more into that. But please tell us in the comments below what works for you, what's not working for you, and what else you would like to see.